Okay, I hit the record button, so here we go. All right, welcome to Thursday, Time Warp Art. Bren here, and I've been busy jelly printing. Tons and tons of jelly prints, and I'm trying to do both sides. So I'm learning that process as well. And I did a video last night. Well, this is um, March, yeah. I did a video last night on this page. This is um, something I was trying. I had an idea and I wanted to, to see if I could do it. And well, it's okay. Um, was it perfect? But this is the second try and the second try came out much better than the first one. And so the process is up on YouTube. And I had some difficulties with uh, getting the paint down but I think I've got it taken care of. Uh, I just needed more paint. Um, but if you look at the process video, you'll see why um, why I had problems and how I how I um, took care of it with paintbrush. So, but you can see that still I didn't get quite as much paint, you know, as I could have. But it came out okay. I'm happy with it. It came out okay, and it's nothing that can't be fixed if I need to. So you know. That's what we're doing. Um, yeah, so I'm going to work on this today and see if I can't fix this flower and then continue to work on the page uh, if I, that's what I feel like doing. I really don't know right now. But anyway, that's the main, my main goal this week is to get this done and out of my head. <laughs> it just got stuck in my head and stayed there. I uh, did some more grunge jelly printing. So let me go through those real quick. These are the single sided so far. I did a dictionary page. This I just sprayed some inks on as well. This was one of the, when I couldn't get from last week, I couldn't get this, I forgot to take the stencil off and I couldn't get it, you know, a good print. So um, yeah, this is from that. So I decided I'd mess with it and put some more stuff on it and see how I could fix it. That one, this one. Yeah, some of these are from last week. This one's from last week. That one. I love this one. I love the little bubbles. Stencil on that one. This one, I dropped some ink. And that was in last week's video too, so. Okay, now this one, I think is where I started doing I put some shimmer drops on this one and did some more printing on it and then started printing on the other side this one's gonna have to have a tiger on it that's just all there is to it <laughs> this is the way that came out that's got to have a tiger I did this one got really grungy and then this is on the back side of this one where I finally got the jelly print off of it but I, I don't know and then this one, and I worked on that side. This was just more or less an experiment trying to um, clean up the stencil. So, and then I've got, of course, the under sheets and the sheets that, not under sheets, the sheets that I was um, brayering. And that one came out really cool because of the paint kicked up on the brayer. So I had to clean the brayer. And these guys, there. So I'll, I'll do something with these. And this was just another stencil. This is another one that I was from last week too. I just printed a solid over it and it changed the color and added some, I don't know, some like highlights or something. That's pretty cool, but it's interesting. And then this one, these are two, these two are on gray cardstock. That's different. <laughs> This one is uh, the Boo Boo Jelly print the <laughs> with that splat stencil. But I really like this. I, I like this a lot. Uh, I don't know why. And I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I'll figure it out. But I really like it. And this is not done. It's not finished yet. So I'm still working on that one. And so what I've, what I've done, let me see if I can. 
I'll stack my papers a little bit better here. So what I've done is cut, since I wanted to do both sides to make a journal, I have cut the papers down to 8 by 10 because I couldn't figure out how to center it on the press. So I just I cut them to 8 by 10 and that way they're going to be centered. So all of the single sided ones that I had done on the 8.5 by 11 I cut down to 8 by 10. That way when I do the other side it's going to be centered. So I trimmed them you know best I could to what was already there and then I'll flip it over and do that side. So, what I want to do is work on this right now, and I used this stencil. This is a, a Donna Downey, oh, let's see, what's it called? Um, um, hmm. Does it seem to have a name on it? I mean, maybe it's on the stencil and I can see it. Let's see. Uh, Hmm, like I've covered it up maybe. Oh, here it is. Okay. Uh, well, it doesn't actually have, uh, let me see. Oh, there it is. I see it. Blooming Floral. There it is. Blooming Floral. That's what it's called. Blooming Floral. You can see it better on the counter now that it has paint on it. Yeah. So I am going to line this back up and see if I can't fix this purple flower and get it the way I wanted it. Now let me see if I can line it back up because I have to flip it over now. And I think it's approximately right there. Yeah, I think that'll work. Okay, now I've got some stays on. Oh, hey, I pulled it out first thing. What do you know? Let me see what the stays on is going to do. I need a scratch sheet. So let me grab something. How about a journal? Got some um, stuff I bought too to show you guys. So, okay, so here's my stays on, and I'm going to grab the sponge I was using. Yeah, it's flexible enough. I can still use that. Let's see if that's going to be the right color. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, so I'm going to see if I can't fix this purple flower so that it actually looks like a purple flower instead of a mishmash. See if this is going to work. I don't know. It's not really coming out very dark over here. Hey Pam. Okay. Okay, let me do that. Okay, at least I can see it now. All right, that's good. Then I can fill it in if I want to. Okay, and now I'm going to see. Oops. See if I can. There's a little here. I don't know if I have anything that color. I may have to get the paint back out for that one. My stays on is emerald. Oh, that won't work. Uh, okay, here's a blue. Blue Hawaii. Let's try this. I need another dauber. Uh -oh. I'd be out of daubers. Okay, I gotta go to the drawer. Yeah, I have to refill the sponges on some of the daubers, so I'll just get one out of the bag. Okay, let's see what this color is going to do. Oh yeah, that's good right there. Okay, now let me line it back up a little bit better. I am a perfectionist, but I'm trying to overcome that. <laughs> Man, I have a big to-do list. I'm waiting on my Seth After um, 
embossing powders. They're supposed to be shipping from uh, Canada, from the manufacturer, but I haven't uh, heard anything about that, so I don't know what's going on there. Okay, I'm going to add to the page just by hitting the corner over here with this blue. Okay. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Okay. So that kind of uh, fixes where it didn't come through the jelly print. So that's a good thing. And my nose is running off uh, again. Okay, so I'm going to hang this up to dry. I definitely need to get some bigger clips. Those little tiny clothespins. And they're hard to grab. <laughs> This weather is so crazy. We've got, uh, it got down to 47, I think, last night, and 80 today. Weird. No wonder my sinuses are going nuts. Okay, so that was at the edge of the stencil. So, what I think I might want to do with that, somehow try to get it to be an actual flower. So, I don't know if I want to do. Can't make up my mind if I want to do the paint or markers or what. Hmm. Tell you what, I'm gonna get some paint. Okay. I'm gonna get some paint. Alright, I want some yellow for centers. I'll leave my journal out here so I can wipe excess paint on that page. And I need a piece of palette paper. That's what I want. Get some palette paper down here. All right, I want a little bit of yellow. Oh, splot. <laughs> Splots come later. Behave yourself. Paintbrush would be good. Of course, the one I was looking for is not in here, so this one will have to do. All right, I'm going to go ahead and paint centers. Because this is quick. And I know that's what I want to do. Paint my centers. And I'm going to put one over here on this side. Okay, that doesn't need one. That really doesn't either. Okay. So I'm going to brush the paint off over here. Oh, I don't have a water jar. Fix that. Got a bottle of water here. Painty water, not drinky water. Okay. Got three bottles there. I keep water in so I don't have to run to the sink every time I do something. All right. Let that brush stay there. And I think I'm going to grab water baby wipe. get this paint. Oh, baby wipes are going wonky here. Okay, I just need a small piece of it. Put that back. So I'm going to pick up this paint and rub it in my journal. So I'm just gonna da -da -da, rub it over here. So I don't waste the paint. It came out in a big splot instead of a little dab. All right, good enough. Okay, now let's see what I'm going to do with this. All right, so the paint I used was blackberry violet, so I'm going to touch up this flower. And I also used, where's the color I used? Where is it? Hmm. Oh, there it is. It was Blue Lagoon. Aha. Okay, so uh, I think I'm going to leave that as is. Well, I'm going to leave the blue one, but I'm going to work on the purple one. The purple one has got to be fixed because he's kind of wonky. 
see if I can get a different brush. I need a round brush. I need a round brush, and of course I can't find a round brush. <laughs> too big, too big, too big. Here, let's go with this one. Let's see what this one will do. All right, we'll try that brush. Okay. Of course, this comes out in a little dab. Of course. <laughs> I probably need more than that. But anyway, I'm going to thin it down just a little bit because that's really, really thick. It's one of the problems with this paint. It's really thick. For mostly what I do, uh, yeah, it's a bit much. Okay, let's see if this is going to cooperate. All right. So essentially, I'll probably just be repainting this. So I'm going to extend that out there. And this in no way looks like that paint, the ink, I mean. Huh. Well, that's all right. We are just going to go over it until it looks like a flower or whatever that may be. I just needed to make it look complete because it really doesn't. That was bothering me because the stencil is like off the edge and I didn't want to do that in the middle of my page. Okay, so I'm just going to touch this up. And I may or may not be happy with it, but hey, I'm getting the, the idea on the paper and out of my head. That's the main thing right now. Getting it out of my head so I can go on to something else. <laughs> my to-do list is huge. I'm not trying to be, you know, this is a stencil flower, so it's not meant to be exact in any way. Had some computer issues when I was trying to get on camera this morning. My computer decided to need to do a reboot. <laughs> I just turned it on. <laughs> I did a reboot this morning. First thing. I don't know. Then, of course, Firefox had to do a little update. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, so I'm going to put some leaves. Okay, so I'm going to dispense with the purple. That brush in the water. And um, baby wipe, get the paint. Since I'm pretty sure I'm done with that for right now. Go ahead and swipe that into the journal. OK, 
Okay, good enough. All right, now let's see. Leaves, so I need some green. Okay, so I'm going to use, let's see. Some dark green, of course I've got to shake it. Haven't used it in a long time. Gotta shake it. So the process video for this this gel printing is the previous video on YouTube. I just did a YouTube recording because it was late. And I want some light green. So I'm going to do some freeform leaves. some paint on the top. I store them laying down and it, this just helps me see the colors. I really don't want to operate with quite that much paint on my hands. All right now. Paper towel. Brush back over here. Okay. So let me see. Let me take a little pencil. Let's see. I know I want some leaves back here. So I've got to have some stems and leaves, but they can go behind the flower. I want a leaf over here. And I want a couple of leaves over here. And then we'll have some coming up from the bottom over here. And we'll just have some general leafy things going on. Okay. Good enough information. All right. Now, let me see. I'm going to start with a medium color. Get some leaves on here. Just get a basic coating over here of medium green. And we'll come back over the top of it. Yeah, this is unusual for me to paint this way. Something specific with paint instead of pencils. So this is different. But I wanted to try. I'm trying to change things up, you know, make make things a little different to see what I like and what I don't. So I may never do this again, but hey, I've done one. That's how I am with needlework. I just, you know, try this, try that. And if I don't like it, don't do it again. I've done just about every kind of needlework at least once. I've got all these small samples of things that I tried but didn't really like. <laughs> I kept telling myself, one of these days I'm going to make a pillow out of each little thing and put them in this big basket. We have all these samples from things that I have tried. And if I didn't like it, didn't do it again. But I tried it. That's That was the main goal. 
I'm still that way. I try it. Hey, Jen. Working on a jelly page. The jelly print um, video is on YouTube. I did that last night. So you can see the process. And right now I am working on background, making leaves and just general painting some green. Just trying to get some green stuff down here. I think I'm gonna switch to the lighter green just for a minute. I'm just trying to do a messy background. I'm not, I'm not trying to paint leaves at the moment. I just want to get some light going on and then I'll put dark over it for shadows. Of course, I'll come back and do pen work, detail. Just trying to get this in there. This is like one of the ugly stages. There's my nose again. Driving me crazy. Ugh. The weather can't make up its mind. Hang on, I gotta blow again. <laughs> Ah, oh, jeez. Leave me alone. <laughs> Stop. Crazy weather. And of course, all kinds of things are blooming. We had one iris bloom in the front yard. We have irises planted. They were given to us. Um, I'm not much of a gardener because I, it's boring. Um, <laughs> not that I can't do it. It's just boring. Um, so they were given to us and my husband put them out there and every year we get one perfect flower, one, because the flower bed itself is in the shade. We have lots of trees and the flower beds in the shade. So it really doesn't get enough sun for the flowers so all right there's the background there's the basic leaves got my flower centers my text is going up here however i'm thinking about if i have a jelly plant the right color i want to cut out some more flowers let's see and I want to kind of make a trail of flowers going up that way. But I want to do it collage. I want to collage it. If I can find jelly print the right color. I may have to make a jelly print. Oh, gee. Tragedy. <laughs> okay. I really don't see anything. Yeah. So, okay. So, I'm going to have to purposefully make a jelly print. Unless this one works. What about this? Oh, this might work. Okay, that might work. And then the leaves. I could get the leaves out of this. Oh, yeah, that'll work. Okay. Oh, up. Oh, hello, brush, water. Okay, let me finish painting now. It's drying. Let me dry it just a little bit. No crystal edges, thank you very much. There we go. All right, let me dry this just for a second. Use the heat gun and not the fan. <laughs> All 
Okay. Good enough. Now I'll add the other paint. Whoop, wrong brush. And my little round one. Okay, now I'm going to put in the shadow green. Here, let me move these guys. I know what I'm doing with those. I'll cut those while the paint dries. Okay, so I am going to see if I can do a little, oh, nice warm paper. My hands are cold. <laughs> This is just simple. I'm not trying to do anything delicate or anything like that. My usual. I'm just trying to get some color in here and uh, we know these are leaves. Detail work will come in later with pens, pencil, whatever I can get on here. At the moment, I am just trying to get leaf impressions. Oh, forgot that one. Then I will come back with pens and whatnot to I mean, this is out of my box as it is, so we'll see how it turns out. I don't know right now. We'll have to wait and see. Okay, I'm going to get some, some impressionistic marks in here just to put some stuff down there instead of leaving it. I may go over it with some transparent inks. Or translucent, not transparent. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I don't really know right now. I'm just going with whatever the muse says. Right now she says, just make dots. So, okay, painty dots. That's what we got. up here. Don't want to leave that spot out. Oh yeah, stick my hand in the paint. Real good. Didn't mess anything up. Yay. Okay, pen work there. All right, so we have an impression of leaves in the background. I don't know what else to do with them at the moment. Um, I keep wanting to do detail, but uh, pen work later. Okay, never mind. Okay, I'm going to grab a page in the journal, flip it over, and smoosh this paint around. Now I'm going to take a squeegee type thing and just play with that. I'm trying to get all the rest of the pages in this journal um, have paint on them. And I like to cover my whole page so that's what I'm attempting here. Dragging the paint and just leaving the texture marks. Okay, that'll work. Good enough for now. Okay. Leave that over there to dry. Hopefully they won't stick my hands in it. Or my elbow. Alright, let's see what's next. Okay, now I'm going to cut, that's what I was going to do, I was going to cut some flowers and leaves. Get my scissors, there they are, I think I want those. 
Okay, so I'm just going to freehand cut this print up. I'm going to take a chunk out of it. And make a few leaves. Oh, being on camera would be good. Just following what the muse says. There's another one. Get rid of those scraps. Put that one here. And I don't know how many I'll need, so we'll start here and then go. Okay, and then I'm gonna need a stem too. And utilize this piece over here for a stem. Okay, and I might need another one, so I'm going to hold on to that. Let's see, I've got an odd number of leaves. I don't like an odd number of leaves. I like an even number of leaves. No, that was the opposite. What did I just say? I don't know. An odd number is better than an even number. So there. All right, so that's five. We'll see if that works. I'm gonna save these to the side. Put the green over there. Now I'm gonna do some freehand flowers. So what I've got in mind is stem coming up. And oops, the leaves. So that may be too many. Maybe, I don't know. I'm just going with what the muse says at the moment. We shall see. All right, so I am going to cut the purple mostly, I hope, <laughs> and I'm going to cut a flower right here to kind of echo the shape of what I've already got, but I don't want it too big and fit on the page. Okay, wonky flower. So there's my flower. Save the scraps till I'm done. Okay, oh, nose again. Jesus. Seriously. Ah. Annoying. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, not sure where I want to go with that. I'm not even sure I want it on that side. I may want it on this side. Let's see what that looks like. Just kind of flip the stem over. Because I'm going to put text in these white spots. Can't even pick these guys up. Gee. All right, so I'm going to do that. Not sure. Like I said, this is just winging it here. Just trying to figure out what I want to do. I don't even know what quote I'm using yet. I'll figure it out. Okay, eh, maybe that side. Don't know. Don't know yet. Extra leaf, maybe I'll throw that on that side. I don't know. Uh, depends on where the quote goes. I gotta pick out a quote. Okay, so that's that's so far 
Okay, so far so good. All right. Over. Okay, so yep, I need to find a quote to use on that. Okay, so uh, let's see what to do next. All right, let that dry. Let's put that there for a minute. I need to move this journal. So I bought some more goodies while that's drying and I'm trying to figure out what to do with it next. I'll show you what I bought. I got a 5x7 gel press and I got one of the Tim Holtz, what do they call it, stamp platform I believe is a platform. Oops, okay it's hard to pick up. It needs bumper feet. I need to put some bumper feet in the corners. It's got this rubber thing to keep it from scooting. Um, however, it's hard for me to pick it up because it's flat on the surface. So I think I'm going to put some bumper feet in these four corners and see how that works for me. It may affect the stamping though. So we'll have to see how that goes. I'm just going to put them on with a glue dot and try it and we'll see. But I got one of these because I've been having issues um, since I have bad shoulders, I've been having issues getting my stamping to come out right. And so I thought this platform would help with that. And uh, the Misty is bigger um, at twice the price. And even though people like it better, um, I'm not sure how much I'll use it. So I went for the less expensive, um, smaller. I mean, it has this, the same, um, I think this it's still eight and a half inch stamping area. Uh, I think that's what the Misty has too, just about. And um, it that really didn't concern me. The, the, you know, largeness of the area didn't concern me because it's flat here. So if your page is bigger, that's okay because it can hang off while you're stamping. The Misty, I'm not sure it does that. Um, it didn't look like it to me, but I'm not sure. And then also an issue that came up was the thickness of the stamp. So you have the, um, well, now I don't have any stamps out. Um, you have the, oh wait, here's a whole drawer full. Hello, stamps. Okay, so you have the, the stamps that have the foam, you know, the cling stamps that have the foam. Okay, and then you also have the clear stamps. If I can grab one of those or some semblance of those. Here we go. Here's some old ones. So the clear ones that aren't as thick. And so the top has uh, one side that's marked rubber and one side marked clear. And you just flip it over depending on which stamp you're using. Well, what what I think is instead of flipping the top over, leave it on the highest setting and then use foam to raise it up, just like the Misty does. That way you don't have to flip this thing over, which is a royal pita. So I'm not doing that. So I'm just gonna use the foam and leave it up there. Um, then too, I saw, I can't remember, I think it was the, I don't know if it was Joggles on YouTube. I don't remember where exactly, but. Um, I saw someone take the jelly plate and use it. Now, I, it might have been Kate Crane. I'm not sure, but it was on the gel press. I think pretty sure it was the gel press website where they took the smaller gel plate and put it here. Then they took the texture plate and put it here and then went like that to get the texture onto the gel plate. That intrigued me as well. So I decided I needed to do that. So now I have this to go along with, oh no, I lost my textures. Ah. Oh, good grief. Okay, disorganized, I still need to, uh, work in the studio. Okay, so I can't find my other texture plate. Huh. Well, 
you know, I have these guys too, and that'll fit in there as well. But what I was mainly wanting is the um, the rubber texture plate that looks like a stamp that, let me see, Carabelle Studios. That's it, Carabelle Studios. Um, they have, there's some on Amazon. There's uh, uh, some at Joggles. Joggles has a better price than Amazon. And I think there's faster shipping than Amazon would be because it's not uh, prime. So I can't get them in two days, darn. <laughs> So anyway, I'll be ordering some of those from Joggles. Um, so anyway, these are new things I got. I'm really enjoying this jelly printing. I also got a roll of the Tim Holtz tissue with the butterflies and the music and the travel. And this is waxy. I had no idea what this felt like. It's waxy. And I ripped the box, so I tore the... It didn't come open very well, so I tore the tear-off strip. <clears throat> so I'm just going to get one of my like wax paper boxes and just use that to, to store it in so I can tear it, unless I just do it with a scissors or craft my, you know, whatever. But anyway, i got to roll this to play with since I usually do my own tissue, but that's so pretty. Let's just give that a try. So I am anxious to use this guy and this guy and do some printing there. Let's see, what else did I get? I got some, oh, here we are. Well, you guys know that I got the Pan Pastel, the whole set of Pan Pastels. However, the Pan Pastels that it comes with the big tray of 20 and they don't fit in my drug drawer. So I'm trying to open the box from the side over here. See if I can get one of them that one of the trays out. Okay. So here is the 20. Okay. Will not fit in my drawer. Way too big. So I got 10. This will fit in my drawer. Okay. So I'm getting, I have to get eight of these. I've got four. So Another four will be coming later. So I've got these to transfer those into so they'll store in the drawers. And my iris cart situation over there, I think I've showed you guys that once, but it's it's still not, the top of it is not fixed right now, so I won't show you. But this will be so nice to have these in the small, holders instead of this great big giant one. Oh, I have to remember to get the sticky off. Before it sticks to something, it shouldn't. You know, there's so many people using this stuff now. Even the junk mail. <laughs> you get snail mail and it's it's like, what? And then you're, next thing you know, you're sticking to everything. Or you're trailing your, your mail. Why not fit with the tape? So I was cleaning up the jelly plate with tape. And so I got this from the jelly plate cleanup. That was kind of fun. <laughs> now I have another project I want to do. Uh, let's see, that, is that all I bought? No, that's not all. I can't think of what it, what else I bought. I must have moved stuff around. Anyway, um, I've been doing some coloring as well. I finished my March. Yay! In March! Yes! <laughs> I finished March in March. Yeah, so I started January, and I got mostly done with January. Um, this was mostly done in doctor's offices, but this is mostly finished. I still have some greenery over here, and then I have to finish this corner up here too. But this, there's a lot of repetition of flowers, and I'm like, okay, yellow and white. I'm like, mm, yellow and white, boring. But I, you know, I started those, and then February hit, and I did not have time to color in February. Like, huh. hey, Carol. Hey, Dar. <laughs> I wasn't paying any attention to chat, sorry. 
Uh, yeah. So anyway, March page is finished in March. Two points. Okay. So these flowers are daffodils, dandelions, and this is called Creeping Speedwell, which I have never heard of and I've never seen. So I, I have no idea what those are. But anyway, that's that. I, I did a list even in the back of this book. Okay, the book is, hello, The Flower Year. Okay, oh, paint. What do you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, by uh, Layla Dooley. And I got it in October, I think. September, October. So in October, I started to do this. And then the holiday stuff started to come around. And I'm like, okay, I'm not going to get this finished. So I kind of had to put it aside. This is the same. This is crab apples. And this is crab apples. So I started to just do base coating on the leaves. I didn't get much sculpting done. I got started a little bit and then had to quit. Um, no, this is all I got done for November. Just like, that's it. <laughs> deciding the colors of the leaves. And of course I wrote it all down in the back of the book. There is a list of all the flowers and on what they are on each page. Okay. So what I did to make it easier for myself, because I will go and find, um, I will Google the flowers because I have no idea what they are and, uh, get some reference for color. And so I will go on to Google and, you know, um, see reference photos. That's what I did for the, the daffodils because I have no idea what a daffodil looks like. Never had any. Um, so anyway, um, what I've done for each month is write down the flowers. And so this will, I won't have to be thumbing the back of the book. I can just go right to the back here and I won't have to go over here and find anything unless I need to know what's on a specific page. Okay. So that's just making it easier for myself. And I've also started a book for reference when I'm, when I'm uh, writing stuff down. Or I just got one of these small cans and mixed media and uh, I'm listing my coloring books. And so when I do testing for color, well, I guess you could there, that would be better. Uh, I'm putting the, the um, tests in here and I had started in another book and of course I posted notes. Um, and so I decided to transfer those into here. And so like I'm writing down, you know, everything I'm trying to do as far as coloring books, which is way too many things at one time. Um, yeah. So test, color test, um, this is gold. I'm working on gold and this is miscellaneous pages. This is the beehive. There's just some things in Floribunda. Um, this is summer nights, my grasshopper. Oh, I finished my grasshopper. Let me see, where is my grasshopper? I think it's this book, it might be the other one. Oh, I think it is the other one. Oops, the grasshopper. Wait, that's summer nights. This is daydreams. Oh, wrong book. Okay, other one. <laughs> other book. That, that that one doesn't have any finished things in it. I'm working in this one mostly. This one stays in my bag to go with me. So this is summer nights, and I did actually finish the grasshopper. So he's done, and I wrote down all his colors. Okay, and then I've got some started. And of course, I'm doing the black back. There's a bug. I, this was the first thing I did. I was testing the pins. So there are like three different pins on that one. Um, green background. So we've got background started. And I, I mostly will do this in like the doctor's office or something. Because um, I don't have to have a whole lot of colors with me. Oh, that's my notes. Okay, so I've just copied the notes to carry with me for my beehive, which goes here. And that one has pumpkins. Of course, I'm not doing pumpkins right now. This is March. And then 
this one now I followed a tutorial on YouTube for this flower uh, I followed another one well I didn't follow it I just did what she kinda did in my own colors for the background going from light to the dark on the outside and then uh, haven't decided what color to make the birds and the other flowers I haven't decided that either and I think that was all I had in this one Okay, yeah that was all I had in this one so that's where I'm going there and sunflowers oh yeah I'm gonna do the sunflowers too um, there's more gold see this is gold and this is more gold that's why that page is there this is a list where I was comparing uh, Faber-Castell polychromos um, and then oh I was writing down Chris Chang on YouTube she does wonderful tutorials she gives me a lot of color ideas um, so I like to watch her um, and then there's on Instagram Daphne's gallery I don't know uh, where she's from or anything but she doesn't really give you her colors and so I was trying to figure out the the burgundy flowers because it she does it mostly that that color range and I love the um, oh that was my strawberry figuring out strawberries um, yeah trying to figure out uh, how to do that and then um, anytime if somebody will tell a, you know if I write down somebody's colorway I will put their name up here and where try to remember where it came from if I do it right away I can remember and this is some playing around with some colors um, oh I was missing a pencil and so I was trying to figure out the closest match I didn't I just bought another pencil um let's see oh here's the here's my daffodils this is the March coloring See, and I just draw lines. Okay, this these greens are for the dandelions. These greens are for the daffodil. <laughs> yeah, shortcut. Uh, fire. Um, let me see. Fox colors. Yeah, I've got some foxes I'm doing. And this was November. And oh, this one. Yeah, this one. I was writing down all the colors that Chris Ching was using for. That in the ten, Tenderful Enchantments book. So let me show you that. I've kind of got uh, deviated from her colors a lot, but that's mostly where I was working from. Let me see. Um, next shelf down. Yeah, here we go. So I have my tote bags all set up with, well, I guess I can show you that. Um, yeah, so Tenderful Enchantments, and I was doing, I've only gotten the one double page going here let me see that's all I've done so far yeah because I was having a hard time getting through this because look at all these colors I mean geez I don't know how many there is there but my goodness she was using so many colors and I finally decided okay I'm just gonna okay here's the colors I'm just gonna do what I'm gonna do <laughs> so I basically have have deviated from whatever she said um, the background here I have used a Faber-Castell pit well it's not this color but the Faber-Castell um, pit marker and not this color I don't remember I've done some layering of color pencil underneath it and then did this on a pen on top to get that deep blue I did some testing to get that because I really wanted that nighttime twilight kind of blue so that was very interesting but like I said I started with the Chris Ching um, YouTube video tutorial where she tells you all the colors and everything so that's a that's a big help when I don't feel like you know doing all of that it's, it's a big help um, okay the base for my mushrooms uh, I am using now where did they go there they are I'm using the watercolor markers doodly 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 let's see zipper okay I'm using these watercolor markers which I can't remember the name of right now okay zig clean color there we go so the base for my of course I've got you know the whole shebang I've got all the colors because you know me I have to have all the colors 
So anyway, that's what I've done on the mushroom, the base of the mushroom, and I wrote that down somewhere. Uh, let me stick these back where they belong. They do have a spot. There, okay. That way I don't have quite so much to clean up later. All right, so, um, but this is the only thing I've got so far in this book, and this one is Tenderful Enchantments. And the way I've got my coloring set up is I have, and this is as, as um, high as my camera will go. So, well, I guess if I took some of this stuff off the stack here. Okay, hold on. Rearranging things. Let me move my collage pieces. Okay, so I don't knock them all over the place. And take down that level of stuff. Don't set that in the wet paint. <laughs> okay, so I'm surrounded by stuff already. So this is the tote bag. I got these on Amazon for 10 bucks. And basically, it's just got pockets all the way around. It's got pockets on the ends. Um, but how I have it set up, I have my color pencil case inside it with the coloring book that I'm using the pencils for. So if you can tell, I've got the pencils raised up. So this is a whole set of, let's see, here's my reference. There's a whole set of Prismacolors in here, all 150 plus a few extras. Um, in here and I've got my pit marker that I use for the backgrounds but you can see they're raised you see and those are the ones that I'm using okay that's the ones that that's why this whole setup works well because um, I've got one case per coloring book and I've got two of those right now so I've got two sets of pencils um, being used for two coloring books. Plus, I've got the home set. So yeah, I've got I've got pencils. Yeah, <laughs> lots of pencils. So I see. I set them in there like this, and then it's ready to go. I just grab and go, and everything I need is right there. Except the pencil sharpener. Oops, where did that go? Might be in my purse. <laughs> That might be in my purse. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, I've got two tote bags like that set up, and then I've got a home set. And oh, where'd I go? Let's put it in the drawer. Wrong drawer. There it is. Okay. I've got a home set in one of the Thornton's cases, and. This one, of course, has a full set in it too. So I found, I found, uh, hi Marie. I found a set uh, on Amazon at one point where they were forty-nine dollars for the whole hundred and fifty set of Prismacolor. Yeah, talk about multiples. Mm-hmm. Most definitely. That's me. I'm, I mean, I'm a little OCD about the colors. I mean, that's just, you know, <laughs> just the way it is. And if I can do it, do it. Because if I don't do it now, I won't be able to do it later. All right, put that drawer back where it belongs. Now, keeping going here. So I have just tucked in the pages that I had started in the Moleskina because I realized that Moleskina is yellow. That's going to taint the color, right? So I decided to move to the white sketchbook instead. Um, this is wood colors. Um, and the wood that I decided, the colors I decided to go with um, for this uh, was from, uh, let me see, Julie uh, on YouTube. Um, I just have Julie written down. I didn't write her her. Oh, darn. I didn't write her YouTube channel down. Okay, hold on. Anyway, so those colors I'm using, and I don't know if I'm going to say this right or not, but I'm going to try. Uh, Zim Zimja Snova or Zimla Snova. I don't know. Um, I'll show you the cover. Anyway, here's the cover. 
Thomas Loptomic, okay. I say Tom Tom for short, but this is the only thing I've done in here so far is the boats. Now, I, um, like I said, I started with Julie's colors for the wood. I really like her colors. And then I, I did some greens for the dragon. Um, and I'm going to do the strawberries like I had figured out earlier. And uh, the water, uh, yeah, I've deviated from the water as well. And to here, it's almost finished to here. Um, I don't know if you can see the little flying fish. If I can get, I don't know if the camera's going to focus that close up. Probably not. How about right there? But you can see the little flying fish. And uh, yeah. <laughs> so what I, I kind of decided to do all the water since I had the pencils out. Do all the water. So I'm almost finished with the water. I am. Um, the last thing I've done is taken the white and blended it. So I'm, I've got to blend this much over here. So I'm told to be done there and then I'll go back and if there's any highlighting or uh, darkening, then I'll do that then. Um, but I thought I'd get the whole, you know, just do the whole thing at once and be done. So, um, yeah, so then I've gotten that far and that's it in this book. I just haven't had a whole lot of time for coloring in here. See, it's, it's awkward because it's so big. When you lay it out, it's like 20 inches. And it's just so big that I can't uh, can't take it with me. So this is a work at home thing. Um, I can't really travel with it this way. And these clips don't hurt the book. These are from those paper shades. Um, yeah, I had a bunch of these. They're, they're flat and they don't see they they don't pinch too well, but they do hold. So yeah. Anyway, <laughs> that's. The, I'm gonna try this one more time. Zimja Snova. <laughs> okay, I don't know. <laughs> it's difficult for me to say that, so I don't know. Um, and I have his, his new book, um, Bill and Son. See, that's easier. Bill and Son is much easier. And don't ask me what it means, I don't remember. Um, but I haven't done anything in here. But I have taken it apart okay so I will be able to use a board that I made to color on those so all I've done is take and see here's like a like a um, clipboard sort of so I will take the page and clip it onto here and that will be so much easier than trying to you know maneuver these big things so that's not happening. Um, but I wanted to be able to take this with me. So I made a, a board. And all I did on this was just take two 12 by 12 um, chipboards and made sure that the grain was opposite. Uh, and I've talked about this before, that the grain is opposite. So let's see, do I have anything that um, has a... Nope. I probably don't have anything to hand that has a grain. And of course, I don't have a piece of chipboard either. Oh, bummer. Okay, what about the cover? Let me see about the cover. This might. Okay, maybe. Maybe I can demo with this. Okay, so the chipboard has a grain to it. And one way it will let you bend it a lot. And the other way not so much. If you cross those, you have a stronger piece. So if you take two of them and make sure the grains are crossed, you've got a stronger board. Anyway, that's what I was getting to and all that. <laughs> okay, so that goes together. Uh, let's see what else. Um, oh, I've gotten some smaller things to take Oops, in the purse. And I've kind of taken them apart too, because then I can do a little board as well. And then I only have to carry one pencil kit. Okay, like that. And I've showed you guys those. Uh, but I've taken this from um, Johanna Basford's book, and I can't remember which one right now. 
and shrunk it down so it would fit onto a sketch pad. And this is just a little a little drawing pad. I think it's six by eight. Yeah, six by eight. So I kind of drew five by seven and and put these in here. And then these can go with, you know, I just stuff this in the purse, you know, close it and stuff it in the purse. And of course there's all kinds of things you can put in here, you know. And then um, temporarily taped in so that I can take them out and either put them into a book or frame them or make a card or whatever. Um, and I'm writing down the colors. So, um, see that's just in there temporarily. Anyway, so that's, that's what I'm doing there. Um, and then I think, I've got, oh, I was doing a lion. See, I'm drawing this, I'm drawing a lion and I needed to get the, the nose colors right and more gold. I still haven't got that figured out. Oh, here's my color references for January in the flower book, the flower year. There's my color references in there. So if I keep everything in here, I think I will do much better keeping track. All right. Um, notes from Seth Baxter, classes and videos, uh, Kate Crane notes. Uh, and then of course I have lots of room. And there's always more of these. <laughs> there's always more. Yeah. And so I found these little books at Christmas um, for the, the grand girls. And uh, I got me a couple too. This one is steampunk. And it's got lots of detail. See, I love the tiny detail. But these are perfect for traveling as well. And I took it apart so that I can just take one and go. And it's single sided so you can use the um, your ink markers. They're single sided. Um, this one, let's see, it's Steampunk by Tanya Bogama. I don't know, I may have butchered that, but that's, that's what it looks like to me. This one is um, Nice Little Town 2 by the same woman. Um, and these were on Amazon. And uh, like I said, I've taken apart these books. This one has a lot more, a lot more coloring in it. And in the back of each one, she's got a sampler. Um, for some of her other books, which is kind of cool. So, yeah, that was kind of cool. But I like the little detail, you know, the tiny detail. And it's good for when you're going somewhere, you know, and you don't know how long you're going to be there, like sitting in the dentist office or the doctor's office or whatever, because, you know, a lot of times you're waiting and waiting and waiting. Uh, yeah, so those are fun. But those are small, ready to go, and uh, it's, it's easy to... To do it and uh, yeah taking the book apart yeah <laughs> yeah I, I have taken apart a good number of my books I do not do the hard covers I love the hard covers the way they are um, yeah the um, especially Hannah Carl Zahn's books um, I've got four of her books and this is gonna last me a while so with with the four then um, you know I don't mind taking this because it folds and it fits in my bag or my, it fits even fits in my purse. Okay. I have a big purse, uh, cause I have to carry food everywhere. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's, that's that. And so I've been mostly taking something like this because it's repetitious, but yet it's still interesting because I'm having to do all the blending in each, each hexagon. Oh, speaking of hexagons, I'll have to show you all my quilt. I haven't showed it to you since it's been nothing but hexagons. Yeah. So, um, yeah. But I have lots and lots to do. I, I have to decide. I don't know what color to make the birds. I keep wanting to go to red, but I'm not sure. I don't know. And I don't know what color to make the flowers. I'm just... I don't know, <laughs> but I love that these are stitched and not glued and I, I'm really enjoying coloring. The paper is really nice. So I'm really enjoying these books. And I think she's got a fifth one coming out here in the States. So I'll have to uh, grab that one too, once it gets on Amazon, but we shall see. Okay. So, um, I guess I've about run out of things to do today. Um, 
I'm, I've got to mull over the page. I've got to, I don't know. I, I can't decide right now what to do next. So we'll see how that goes. But detail work for sure. I've got to find a quote. Um, and I've got to glue those down. But I have to find the quote first. I want to make sure I have enough room for the quote. I may have to shorten the flower. We'll see how that goes. Um, don't know just now. But like I said, if you want to see the process video for this, it's up on YouTube. I did it last night. Basically, um, I put down the stencil, put the paint through the stencil, and it was, where's my stencil? Oh, it's hanging up because I used it. Huh. It's on the zip line. Okay, so it was this stencil from Donna Downey, and I saw the name of it on the other side. Blooming Floral DD009. Blooming Floral. And this one is a Donna Downey. Okay. Uh, anyway, so I um, put the stencil down on the jelly plate, put the paint through it, um, lifted it up, let it dry, and then I used scotch tape, different layers of scotch tape. So I have different sizes of scotch tape, not layers sizes of scotch tape where one is wider than the next so I put the skinny ones up here and then got wider going down um, my spacing did not come out exactly even but that's okay you know for winging it I didn't measure anything it just did it okay so um, I had this idea in my head and I just had to get it on the paper I just had to <laughs> so we'll see how it comes out in the end but I'm enjoying it um, like I said, I may put some ink over the white areas, um, the translucent ink. So we, we'll see how, see that the FW, I've got some FW that might be the right color. Uh, I've also got some, I think it's Liquitex, I think, hang on one second. Uh, yeah, Liquitex, but I don't think that's the right color. So I think the FW is going to, going to win over over this because I think this purple is probably the right one and this blue is probably the right one to use. I'm going to test it and we'll see but I'm pretty sure that's what I'm going to do with the flowers to fill in the white spaces and then I'll do detailed pen work um, with whatever pens work. Uh, sometimes it's India ink, sometimes it's the gel pens and sometimes it's the Posca pens. Uh, just depends. This is, of course, my favorite, the Uniball Signo White, and there's two size, two um, size of tips. I have both, of course I do. Um, <laughs> there's, uh, yeah. So I don't know. I may use stamps um, to initially put the text in here. I've got so many different sets that are different sizes, and so I can use the tiny and then get bigger and then bigger as we go down. Um, to finish the quote and then do the pen work on the quote. Um, yeah, we'll just, we'll see. Uh, I don't know how it's going to go, but anyway, that's basically what I did. As I put the tape down, put the black paint on and pulled the tape up. And then I put white paint and I used the Studio 71, um, the white paint um, all over it and then did one pull. And that's how I did it. And that, that video is on YouTube if you want to see me struggling through <laughs> trying to figure it out. <laughs> but anyway, that's that's what my idea is for this page. And so I'm going to try to finish that. Whether I turn the camera on or not, I don't know. It depends. Um, and I have noticed, um, I was listening to the video because I had to edit. It's the first time I've edited. So you'll have to excuse the abrupt changes in scenery. Um, yeah. I, I just have a basic editor on my computer and it's a, you know, a freebie and, um, I've not edited, you know, um, so that was uh, an experience. It took a long time. <laughs> of course, I know I'll get better at it, but that's that anyway. And, um, so, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I have a tutorial from Jody Old and she, it's called Grunge Inc. Uh, it's on her Etsy, which is hosted through another website, Creative Something. Uh, 
can't remember right now. Hello, figures. But anyway, I, I had to get some Hello India ink. So I have a ton of India ink. She uses India ink for this process. And I'm like, oh, I want to do that. So I just got some Speedball um, India ink. And heavy. And there's a lot of ink in here. Um, I ordered some Upo paper in large sheets because all I have is the small Upo. And this is good for sampling, but if I want to do a painting, I need the bigger sheet. So I got some 11 by 14. So we shall see um, how that goes. So that's what another thing I'm going to be doing. Plus, I'm still waiting for Seth Apter's stuff to get here. So, you know, whatever. Um, oh, your dog's have your dog. Your son's dog is having puppies. Wow. Eight puppies, holy cow. What is a golden doodle? I have no idea what a golden doodle is. Hmm, and a golden retriever, but I don't know, golden doodle. Interesting, don't know. <laughs> okay, anyway, I'm gonna let y'all go. Uh, Mom's coming over uh, pretty soon. She hasn't called quite yet, but she's almost done with her exercise class. And um, so I'm gonna uh, get out of here and I uh, appreciate you hanging out and watching on YouTube. Appreciate that too. And I will see y'all whenever I get another video done. Thanks so much. See you later.